Welcome back everyone to yet another video and today I will be reviewing the Crockett & Jones Eyelay Boot in dark brown scotch grain. Coming up! Welcome back everyone, I hope you're all doing well and I hope you've been enjoying this journey of uh, exploring the Crockett & Jones men's collection. Uh, this time we'll be looking at, as I said, the Crockett & Jones Eyelay, which is a very nice, uh, casual, a bit chunkier boot with the Stormwelt and dark brown Scots grain, reminiscent of uh, the, the Coniston. So the story behind this is that a client ordered it and just before I shipped it, I shot the video and I'm very excited to show it to you. So, as always, we will take a closer look at the boot itself, uh, its features, uh, the leather, see if it's pretty much uh, the quality is, is there as you would expect uh, the price point the availability and generally a closer look at the boot itself so let's get to it all right so let's discuss the boot itself so what do we have here uh, first of all we have uh, what you would call a bit of a taller jumper boot derby boot uh, it bears resemblance you know it has resemblance with the your regular derby boot however this one uh, has not only scotch grain leather which is you know the embossed pebble grain leather that you see here but also it has the design of a wingtip so it has broguing pretty much a full brogue with broguing meaning the perforations of the leather and you can see them up close like for example here or the front and this is what you call a wingtip design and What's also very interesting, I, I always talk about this, it fascinates me, is that the Crockett & Jones Scots Green Leather fades towards the toe. We've seen this on, uh, on for example, the, the Boston uh, loafers. And also you can take a good glimpse at the 365 last, which is quite round. I'll show you from the back. There, you see how round it is. Uh, Crockett & Jones says it's their most generous fit. And I would tend to agree. So these are a bit uh, bigger boots as well. This is a UK 11, so it might appear bigger in the camera. Uh, generally, it is uh, quite, uh, it's, it's not exactly chunky, but it's definitely a more casual boot that you would wear with something like a, a pair of denim or like even for, for a hike. Uh, these also made an appearance in Skyfall uh, in the James Bond movie, 2012, I think. So it has sort of a bit of a history. Uh, when it comes to the design itself, uh, of course, uh, it's Goodyear welded, but it's also Storm welded, as you can see here. Really nice. Uh, so it's a little more, more waterproof. Uh, easily identifiable by the little strip up, like around the welt. It has an extra speed hook here, usually you see around four. And what else? Uh, but on the back, I really like what Crockett and Jones does with uh, their uh, uh, pull tabs. They are quite discreet. I don't, I'm not sure how functional they are, but they're quite discreet and they don't go over the shaft, so uh, they, do, they will not get stuck in your pants. Now let's just uh, do a quick inspection as well. I mean, Dinosaur, their theirs is like very well built and uh, stitching on the bottom is excellent there is a tiny bit of smudging here in the front nothing nothing problematic uh, overall the the broguing seems to be quite good and uh, quite even as well now there is something new I learned uh, let's see if I can show you here you might be able to see a small cut on the weld, on the storm weld. And this is just how the weld goes all around and then comes to the other side and it just ends here. So it's not, it's not a defect. Something new every day. Uh, as far as, uh, I mean, everything, the medallion is pretty good in the front. Uh, I did notice, uh, like, well, uh, the inner lining is pretty good overall. It's very, very smooth, very high quality. There is a bit of smudging around the eyelets and it can be from the tongue but it just can't be from anything else. Uh, it, it is not 
any kind of aesthetic blemish and really just minor things you might notice. Uh, as far as the tongue goes, you can see here that it has a suede feel, so it's going to be quite soft. There is a bit of sort of like, ah, it's not glue, but some threads. And overall, I mean, feels very solid. It, it's quite it's quite heavy um, to, to hold this. Ooh. It's much heavier than the Coniston. Then again, this is a UK 11. This must be, with the package, around, I would say, two and a half kilos with, with, uh, with the box. Uh, what else? Uh, let's see, let's check the other boot. For any defects or problems, uh, laces always just sturdy and uh, decent quality. Broken here seems to be also good. I don't see any defects in uh, the welt either. Uh, the, actually, the finish and the what you call the sort of like edge dressing is all right. On this pair, I mean, you can see a bit here that it's not finished as well as it could have been, but it doesn't matter. Um, let's see. No, I think like, there's another little small detail I like is that uh, the broking, the, what do you call the serrated edges uh, on, on the brogs, they are quite discreet. They're not very, you know, those jagged edges that you see in a very, very counter style like trickers. So it does keep a bit of a lower profile. And of course, since this is a storm welt, it is 360 degrees, so it goes all around the shoe. And that means that you will also have a bit of a chunkier profile when it comes to, to the sole, as you can see here. You can see it a bit more. Uh, very nice. Uh, you can see maybe here that you have the stacked heel with, uh, with the rubber in between and the rubber finish of the Dynate uh, at the bottom. Overall, very good boot, uh, very interesting design. I like this last much more than the Snowdon, the 228, I think. I think this is actually quite round, but it's a bit more tasteful uh, for this type of boot, at least. So that's it for the close-up. Let's move on to sizing. And that was it for the boot itself. No, we're going to talk about, as I said, uh, we're going to talk about, you know, the sizing, availability, pricing, etc. Uh, first of all, we need to discuss sizing. I would say this is the most important part because it has to fit. So this is on the 365 last, which uh, we mentioned that is quite, quite round. And so Crockett and Jones released this, I think, in 2009. Then it made its appearance in Skyfall, I think, in 2012, the James Bond movie. Uh, it is... <sighs> They say that it fits true to size, uh, but it is their more generous fit. So they said, take your regular 325, for example. However, when looking at it, and especially when they say that it has a very generous toe box, I cannot recommend it to you yet uh, until I get some feedback and uh, more data on it. Uh, however, it is a winter boot and that you'd probably wear with more thick socks. So if that's the case, then, and you don't size down the 325, then you can take your regular. However, if you have a less voluminous feet, I would say size half a size down. Unless you have wider feet or like, you really want your space at the front. So that's my recommendation about sizing. Of course, if anything changes, and I get some more data, I will update it in uh, the description. So make sure to come back to it and check it out. Now, availability. Uh, as always, through the official uh, Crockett & Jones retailers and their own shop. For you Americans, it's much easier to buy from Europe. Uh, I actually retail this, as you would expect, pro at the Noble Shoe. And you will find this, depending on the currency changes, I would say starting from $570 USD up to maximum around $700. For those of you that go through the official retailer, expect it to be, I would say, around $750 to $800 possibly USD. Uh, so if your size is not in stock uh, or anything, let me know. Uh, send me an email. And I'll try my best to help you. Otherwise, I will link uh, the product down in the description below. 
So uh, we talked about availability, we talked sizing. Now the important part is like, uh, should you buy this? Is it worth your money? Uh, quite honestly, uh, this is uh, this is a very nice casual boot. I do appreciate a little more uh, the details compared to the Coniston because of the sort of like wingtip design. Uh, but I think the Coniston is more of my style. Now, another thing that you still need to keep in mind is that this is a little higher boot. It will sit higher up your ankle. So if you have issues or you just want a bit more freedom or you don't like very high boots, very tall boots, this might not be for you. Uh, to show you an example, this uh, this is a double monk boot that I have from another uh, brand and it's how usually your Chelsea boots or yacht pours or general boots would look like like in height. And when you compare it to the ILA, you can see immediately that the ILA is, uh, you would say, five to five centimeters a bit taller. So bear that in mind. Uh, it's, it's a pretty good boot. The, the finishing is good. Uh, overall, like the leather quality is, uh, like I'm, I'm actually quite impressed by their uh, Scott screen leather. And I, I do I do see a pattern here, you know, with uh, dark uh, with with a grain fading towards the toe area. I think it's a very recognizable thing for Crockett and Jones right now. So I was not aware of it until I started actually to look at them. But solid boot. If you're looking for a winter boot, if you like taller boots, uh, if you like a bit more durable boots, and you en you enjoy the color and the the pattern. This is a very good investment and uh, it will definitely last you for, for many, many years. So that's my official uh, recommendation and I would like to know what you think in the comments down below. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please leave a thumbs up. Otherwise, let me know what I can improve. And don't forget to subscribe if you're new to the channel because I have much, much more content. And stay in for about 30 more seconds so you hear the bad dad joke of the week. I had a relationship with my elevator but we broke up because our relationship was full of ups and downs. <laughs> I found that one. I found that one on YouTube comments. I'm, I'm guilty. And I had to put it in. So, of course, uh, if you have a really bad dad joke that you'd like to share with the world, leave it down in the comments and I might pick you next time. So, until that next time, take care and bye.